Thank you very much. Um, this is Arc Report A7. Um, my name is Robert Kielstra. Uh, I'm the CEO of ECW. As said, ECW is an energy company and, uh, and a water company, so we do utilities at, uh, at the business park. Uh, formerly, uh, before Agriport was founded, all uh, outside vegetables were grown in, uh, in Agriport, in that area, in the Wieringen Meer area. And with uh, the introduction of Agriport, the horticultural business comes into force. And if you combine that, you get your first synergy. Uh, there's, there's the products from the greenhouses and there's the products from the outside vegetable growers. And what we really want to go at in the next 10 to 20 years is become the one-stop shop for the supermarket. What you see is there are supermarkets, uh, they get their stuff from uh, like a big company like Simon Lowe's. They provide everything to Albert Heijn, which is non-degradable. So like toothbrushes, uh, shampoo, all that stuff. So that comes from a very big warehouse where big trucks of toothbrushes and shampoo come in. And on the other end, there's trucks going to shop one, two, three, four with sorted varieties of goods. That's cross-docking, you call that. Uh, on one side, it's being filled. On the other side, it's being emptied. Uh, where we want to go with the greenhouses and with the vegetables is get to that same level, only then with vegetables. And if you look at vegetables, about 30% of the value is between the supermarket and the grower. So there's a lot of money. But also 30% of all transport on the road is related to agriculture. So 30% of the traffic jams, 30% of the CO2 emissions of trucks is related to agriculture. From farm to food to shop, all that included. So there's, we can improve there. This is the end where we want to where we want to go this will take time it's not so much energy or water related but it's more about the concept as a whole just to give you a quick introduction this is the side as you see it everything that's blue has been built by these nine uh, greenhouse companies and the orange part is being built right now in total it's about 310 hectares of greenhouses so in acres that's about 750 acres or something like that it's, that's relatively big. Uh, there's these nine greenhouse companies, and lately uh, Microsoft is building a big uh, data center up here, uh, being part of, uh, of the consortium. Uh, jointly, these growers have founded uh, ECW since there was not enough utilities, uh, and ECW, on her turn, invested in a lot of power grids, gas grids, uh, sorry, and a geothermal heat plant here on the top. Uh, that's our latest uh, investment. We have now been operational with the geothermal heat plant for about a year and reduced the gas consumption with about 2 million cubes a year, uh, a month, sorry, a month. The, the gas consumption is reduced by 2 million cubes a month. Um, so that's a little bird view. This is again the the greenhouses. This is a 40 hectare greenhouse, one greenhouse. This is the parcel from Microsoft. Here you see the drilling tower from the geothermal heat plant and the other growers here at the back. So what do we do as a company? We own and operate grids, energy, uh, gas, power, heat, CO2 we're working on. We don't have it yet. Uh, we have a water grid uh, for uh, uh, spraying crops. Uh, a fiber grid, we have production as a company, geothermal production and some COPs. The most CHPs are from the growers. And we do services um, related to our grids and production. That is uh, eWeb, that's the trading within the growers. So when one has an excess of heat or power or whatever, the other one has a shortage. We're trying to combine that before we trade it with the market. That's, that's a main product. We developed that together with a partner called Westland Infra. It's a utility company in the Netherlands. We have a groundwater permissions of the whole site. We own these and we divide the underground space. So we store rainwater in the ground in the winter. We pump it in the ground. And in the summer, we pump it back up. Um, but if, you, if your neighbor does it here, it's best that you do it over there instead of adjacent to it because then these systems get mixed up. 
So what we do, we have one big permit as ECW for the whole site, and we divide these permits over the site, and we monitor all these groundwater systems, how they work, and try to learn from that on a, on a business park level so that when the next installation is being built, it can even be better than the previous one. We have a system in place for backup power in case we have a total blackout of the grid. We can turn up the whole, the whole business park with a few CHPs from growers and get everything live again. And uh, based on all the meter data we gain, we uh, report back to our customers, well, we see your energy consumption is relative to the others, high or low, or this and this is what you're doing, is that smart, this sort of advice. Um, it's about inter-industry cooperation. And I learned this from a grower who said, uh, there's only one thing worse than having a neighbor doing the same, and that's having no neighbor. Because if you have no neighbor, like this company, well, who is there to, to cooperate with? There's, there's no chance that you can, maybe there's options here. He, this is probably a heat plant having waste heat or whatever products needing cooling water and all that stuff. There's opportunities, but there's no neighbors and it doesn't seem to be the location where there will be neighbors. So a uh, first thing for inter-industry cooperation, a first uh, base rule you need is you need to have neighbors. And if you don't have them, try to find them. And if you want to find them, you need to know what kind of a neighbor you need to find. So for us, that was really about uh, owning all the infrastructure. We invested in that. We saw we had, for example, energy and access of power. We had all this infrastructure in. Who is going to use all that power? Where are we going to bring it to? Which industry is still consuming power and increasing its capacity. Well, w we had a, a trainee and we said, well, this is a book with a list of companies. Everything's in there. It's called the Green Book. All the codes of companies are in there. You go and read it and find which companies consume power and are still in the, in the position that they expand their businesses. End of the day, he came up with a list of five and data centers were in there. We never heard about data centers, never heard of the word. that I wasn't aware of what it was. I wasn't aware of their existence even. Sounds interesting. Computers, that's new, that's growing, must be good. So we dived into that, and from one step to the other, end of the day, we ended up Microsoft building a data center in Agriport. That's a short summary of five years of work. Uh, but that was how it started. So. You don't get a neighbor for synergy by itself. You have to think about it. What is the neighbor I'm looking for? And industry cooperation is about differences. These two monkeys, they can cooperate. They can do the same as is being done in the horticulture very much. People and companies work together doing the same. Together, better or cheaper or try to gain a reduction in cost by uh, combining their purchasing strength and those sort of things. That's good, but that's not synergy. That's not inter-industry uh, cooperation because then you need different companies. And that's really also a mindset because a company like a data center or whatever industry has a whole different, they, you don't find them here on the green tech. You have to go to the power gen. You have to take the other door. And, um, that is really something that uh, ECW and AgriPort were on uh, as the development companies trying to understand that business, trying to understand the people working in the business, trying to be a, a good partner for them to do business with. It's also about a, a relation in the end, building it up before you want to utilize synergies. There has to be a trust, companies being physically connected, you don't, do, you don't do that on a fortnight. It's not a decision for a fortnight. It takes time. So you need different companies, different industries, and you need to focus on that and need to invest in that. Um, and that is really about cooperation and synergy, just what I told her. That's the two, 
the two differences. Um, and also about, about cooperation and synergy, I saw that also within our park. If you look at, for example, heat consumption, all greenhouses at Argiport have a high heat consumption when it's cold. So what's the synergy there? You can do some cooperation, try to purchase or make it cheap, but there's not really somebody having an access and somebody having a shortage because the demand is on the same time. So within the sector, is what you see is there's different growers, and um, in our case, it's tomatoes and peppers. It's greenhouses with light, greenhouses without light. That is some differences, and what we see there is that there's some companies who have an access and the other have a shortage. For example, with water or with heat during the planting period of peppers, it's in the end of the year. The tomatoes, they do a little bit earlier. So that are the swapping periods that, that companies can, for example, uh, swap their geothermal heat capacity to the neighbor, saying, well, I'm, my greenhouse is empty this week so uh, because I'm cleaning it for the next crop. So if you want my capacity uh, of, of geothermal heat, please feel free to do so. That is still doable on this end, but if you really want to make a step, you have to look at an industry completely different, and then you have the all year round the possibilities to uh, change uh, resources from one to the other, and that's also required to get the money back for the investments which you probably need to do to get companies linked up, because usually some infrastructure is required for that. Um, and there's another thing I think is very important. Uh, I saw a lot of pictures from Wageningen University and other universities studying these concepts of, um, yeah, for like the Chinese market, you have uh, a pig farm, a chicken farm, a greenhouse, a waste incinerator, all that being linked up together. And you can make very good pictures of that and it all works. The numbers, they, they work as well. But then there's the timing issue, especially we're in a free market, so we're not China. You cannot say, we'll draw it and we'll build it all at once and interlink it and that's it. It's a free market, so it's all individuals, companies, and they have all their own decision-making process and all their own moment that they start building and start expanding and doing all that stuff. So usually, as a company, you have to be able to start solo, to start individual and to have a a financial good business individual and then really uh, the synergy is the add-on to your business makes it even better makes it more sustainable makes it more profitable but you should also be able to survive without that's I think otherwise it, it won't start it just won't start you cannot you cannot get it done at exactly the same time um, examples on our end so what we do with the data center, they take our power. We're now examining to take their water. Uh, they have a big roof. We have a huge water consumption. So why not collect the water from their, from their roof and use it in the greenhouse? Um, heat, uh, a data center is actually a computer. It's actually an electrical heater. So the heat is in, traditionally is being disposed few years ago it was a big cost factor to get rid of it with cooling capacity. Today uh, it's cooled with outside air. So then you get to the cheapest point of cooling. If you see the development in data centers, they went from a power consumption of, of one kilowatt and a cooling consumption of one kilowatt to get rid of the one kilowatt, which they just made power into heat. So the, the power consumption for cooling was equal as high as the power consumption for the, for the computers. They call that a PoE. So they started with a PoE of two, one for the computer, one for the cooling. They're now down to 1.1. It's the average figure in data center world. So they're at the bottom. So the next step really they can take is if there's nothing more to decrease your consumption, the next step is to supply. And to be able to do that, you have to be close to each other because otherwise it will not happen. You have to be close to a customer of heat. And a second thing, what you see in a data center is that every three years, all computers get thrown out and everything is being replaced. 
So it's a life cycle of three years. It's a reinvestment cycle of three years continuously. Well, as a company as Microsoft or another big data center, they build up a data center in phases. It's not all at once. As you probably have read in the papers, they're building the second phase right now. The last phase they started a year and a half ago. So it will be an ongoing replacement process for the next 10, 20 years. And every time there's a moment to say, can we already use your heat? We haven't done it right now with this first phase, but as we are together, and as we are on speaking terms, of course, there are opportunities in the future to do that. Another thing we're looking for is a factory X, and I call it X because we're in the process with this factory now as we were five years ago with the data center. And we're really looking for the company that produces a lot of CO2. And everything in the world, companies producing a lot of CO2 will be honed away, uh, will have a hard time getting permits and stuff like that, but in fact, if you come to our site, we'll pay you for the CO2 to get it produced. We will purchase it from you and utilize it in the greenhouse, assist you with your permits, everything's governed, you have a good deal. Um, probably a company that like that has also some waste heat, and we'll take that as well. Um, then um, we see also opportunities in uh, Exergy. Uh, Exergy is the if you look, for example, at greenhouses, a greenhouse is 23, 24 degrees Celsius is the temperature. Um, that can, a greenhouse can be heated with, let's say, 40 degrees Celsius. But in practice, growers use 50 to 60 degrees water, water to heat up a greenhouse like that. And they get that from a CHP, which makes 95 degrees Celsius heat. So. If there's a customer who needs 90 degrees Celsius and has waste heat of 60 degrees, it can be used for a greenhouse thereafter. And that's called XRG, that's the, the, the uh, uh, part of science, so, so to say. So you go, you have a customer using the high grade heat and then you go to a customer using the low grade and then you degrade it even further. In that cycle, there's opportunities for the future. I skip this because I'm, uh, I'm in shortage of time. The main message for our next customer in our business park is please come to produce lots of CO2 at our park and combine it with our business. And I want to leave it with that for now. Thank you very much, Robert.